Okay, I just made a video yesterday about what to expect from Remnant 2 come July 25th. If you haven't seen that, then it'll be linked in the description. But in that, I told you that I'd go more in depth with the builds and how insanely diverse they are. When I said that the versatility was more, I meant it. Remember, Remnant 2 is offering an evolution of what we had already before. And in this video, I'm going to explain how specifically the archetypes will play a large part in that, while most people don't think they will. Hey, what's going on y'all? It's Be Righteous from Identity again. And if you're interested in builds, guides, gameplay, and insightful discussions, then drop a like and don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel. Okay, when it comes to the archetypes, I don't know which one you're deciding to go with first, but my go-to going in is the Challenger. I just love the idea of brolic characters, those types that are resilient while dealing massive damage. And with the new functionality in Remnant 2 to combine two archetypes together, well... That aspect will be even more broken but i'm not going to bore you and go into all of what these archetypes can do step by step there are tons of videos about that already i'll just explain key details and how they make your builds amazing so once you pick your archetype after reaching a certain level with it you can then combine this with another essentially granting you bonuses from both then what's awesome is that once you've chosen your combo a name is generated for you based on what you have combined now of course the secondary archetype will be less effective than the primary but the ability to have the option to even do this speaks volumes to the build versatility in Remnant 2. And this is only the beginning. Now I've scoured the internet, Remnant's official discord, and almost every other source trying to find some sort of information about new amulets, rings, gear, something that would help me to theorycraft perspective builds that I could possibly make in Remnant 2. But there is nothing I can find. Obviously the devs want to keep it a secret as much as possible. but. I think they give us a hint of what's happening because in the deluxe edition they offer the void radiant and elder armor sets these are sets that were previously unlockable and remnant from yashes which will be different by the way since it's now four instead of three that completes a set also that they no longer offer a set bonus which we already know the set bonuses will now be something called mutators these are activated on your weapons now even the melee weapons which is why i'm so stoked about using the challenger archetype did you see that melee weapon he has the steel ends well, I think they call it. But this means that a lot of the build crafting will be very similar to Remnant from the Ashes. And here's how it'll be so much more versatile than before, specifically with the amulets and rings. I stated in my last video that they've added two more ring slots. What I didn't do is express to you how crazy that actually is. Because when games that have builds start throwing out huge bonus numbers like 25% movement speed boost or four times critical hit damage more than what you already deal, these are very significant buffs and gunfire games is telling us that we're able to have up to five bonuses that each carry significant bonuses like these now since we don't have any details as to what exactly we're getting in remnant 2 let me just give you a few examples of what to expect in this realm there's a ring called the sage stone that was previously in remnant from the ashes and it's a must-have for new players not only new players but people who call themselves completionist ones who like to complete 100 percent of the game and even more i personally like to explore what all characters can do so i tend to have multiple accounts each with a different character firstly because i like to have the opportunity to get more gear weapons etc you know stuff that you could share with your other characters but also just to experience different play styles and have versatility when playing with groups in co-op to make sure we have all bases covered when we're playing some hard content but this band, called the Sage Stone, increases all earned experience by 30%. This means that you can power level all your characters if you like to get to those higher levels faster in order to access the best loot. It also shares the experience gained with party members if they're within range. I don't know if this particular one or other rings will be in Remnant 2, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did add these or some items similar. One thing I keep hearing about the dev team over at Gunfire Games is that they listen to their community, which is always great because this means that the player pretty much gets what they want. Another awesome aspect about rings and amulets is that they're almost always account bound, meaning that you can share this with your other characters you've created on the other accounts. So you can utilize this from the beginning. If not, then that's cool because if you have friends that have this, then they can help power level you with it as well. So you really can't lose. Here's one more ring that I want to tell you about. It's called Devouring Loop. This is a ring for those damage dealers out there. It grants the wearer a 5% chance to deal a massive four times damage with critical hits. Now, if you have a character with a build that's specced directly into crit mainly, then I can't imagine the damage you'll deal, the damage you'll be dishing out. But as I said, these examples are just to give you a small taste 
of what to expect. I'm sure in Remnant 2, it's going to be insane. And here are all the archetypes you can choose from. The Medic, Challenger, Handler, and Gunslinger. Now, I want you to look at these, check out the perks, and talents, and traits, and all that, and just quickly try and imagine which two you'll like to combine. You want to be a DPS slash healer? Would you like to be a support beast with a companion that can revive while you heal? Or would you just want to be an all-out damage dealer? while thinking of nothing except destroying everything in your path. Well, the choice is yours. And as I said, this is only the beginning. With the ability to have four gear slots, you can now mix and match way better than before. The encumbered issues that players always have in any game that has weight involved will be so much more manageable, especially since the challenger has an archetype specific trait called strong back that allows you to increase your effectiveness in that area. And by the way, the archetype traits aren't only restricted to that specific archetype. You can use it with another, but not without sacrificing some trait points to do it. I know, it sounds very intricate and detailed, but a lot will be made clear once we dive into everything. But I think for me, one of the aspects of build making in Remnant 2 and why it is very satisfying is because of the changes to how trait points are spec'd. How you have to be careful with them and what to invest in because you can't have it all in this one. There's only a limited amount you can spend so it will be interesting to see what's best in slot and what's not. This for me plays a huge part when it comes to the replay factor in the play experience when end game comes to mind. I love playing games that have a lot to do after I complete the campaign. So I'm really looking forward to all the combinations I'm going to be putting together. Let me know down below what combinations of archetypes you'll be putting together. I'm thinking Challenger, Gunslinger. Like the video if you feel the same way as I do. Anyways, I appreciate you watching to the end. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more to come. I'll catch you in the next one. Be right out.